Look what I got. Brookside challenged me to make a surprisingly delicious cake using weird flavor combinations. Well, challenge accepted. My name is Lori and you guys are watching The Icing Artist. Thank you so much to Brookside for sponsoring this video. Not only is this cake going to look like an avocado, but it is going to taste like an avocado because I'm going to be baking fresh avocados into the cake. Just so you guys know, we're gonna be saying avocado a lot today. To make this cake, I've got eggs, butter, fresh avocado, of course, milk, vanilla, salt, baking powder, sugar, and flour. Like the base of most cake recipes, I'm going to whip up my butter, my sugar, and my vanilla until it is light and fluffy. Now for the avocado part of this avocado cake, I'm just going to cut up some fresh avocado and then put that into a tall container, squeeze some lime juice into that and blend that till it is nice and smooth. The lime juice is really gonna help the avocado keep fresh, but also add to that whole flavor balance. That's right, we're baking here. And then I'm gonna add that into my wet mixture and just bump up the color a little bit by adding some food coloring. And you, of course, don't need to add food coloring into it, but it's kind of like a lemon cake. The lemon juice doesn't add that much of a lemon color, but if you add a little bit of food coloring, all of a sudden people are like, oh, I get it. It's a lemon cake, because it's yellow. Then I'm just gonna add in one egg at a time, lightly beating after each egg. Once that is done, I'm going to set that aside and get all of my dry ingredients ready and mixed together. Add those dry ingredients into my wet ingredients in little additions, mixing together, alternating with my milk. Once that is fully blended, I'm just going to pour that into my eight inch round pan that I've just lined with some parchment paper and bake it off. While that cools, I'm going to make my chocolate avocado seed because I am not doing a fondant seed. I'm going to do an actual chocolate sphere. To do that, I'm just gonna pour some melted chocolate into this silicone sphere mold. This works perfectly to pop the chocolate right out when you're done. And I'm going to layer that up with lots of layers because I do not want this sphere to crack. We are going to be filling it with Brookside chocolates right inside so it's actually kind of like a pinata seed. If you guys have not tried Brookside chocolates yet, you will be shocked at how good the combination of chocolate and fruit flavor is. I think Brookside's like distinct flavor combinations is what makes them so surprisingly delicious and perfect for this cake. I'm gonna fill these spheres with my favorite flavor combination, which has to be the dark chocolate and pomegranate. If you guys have not tried them, give them a try. I should probably mention to be careful when you're popping them out of the silicone mold. As much as they pop out nicely, they also can pop and go flying across the room. Melt the two halves on a hot plate so it just really sticks the two of them together. And while that sets, I'm gonna start carving my cake. Now that my cakes are cold, I'm just going to take them out of their cake pans and carve off all of that caramelization. Then just measure halfway and cut them in half and we're just gonna be stacking these halves up together. Now I did make a second batch of this cake recipe that I did at a separate time. So the colors do not match up at all, but good thing avocados kind of have an ombre on the inside. So we're just gonna play off that and act like it's purposeful. I'm just gonna carve out the front of the cake to get that really avocado shape I'm looking for. And once I have that, I'm going to lay my cake down to really round off and carve out the back. For the filling, I thought I would do a chocolate buttercream, so I'm just gonna pour melted chocolate right into my buttercream and fold that together. Guys, this is so good. And then just layer up my cake. If you have not subscribed to this channel yet, please hit that red subscribe button down below. I would love for you to join the icing family. We make cool cakes here and other stuff sometimes. What you guys may or may not know about me is I have real cake fears, and one of them is of my cakes falling over. So I'm going to tear this cake for the only reason of being scared that the whole cake is going to collapse, but I'm pretty sure you don't need to tear it. Mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna cover this cake in two parts of fondant. So for the first part, I'm just going to crumb coat the front of the cake in my chocolate buttercream and make sure it is perfectly smooth. Once that is done, I'm going to roll out my avocado colored fondant and then roll that over my rolling pin and roll that up the cake, smoothing out completely and then just trimming off the excess fondant. Now, for some reason I'll never quite understand, I decided it'd be a good idea to then lay this cake down on its face that had just been covered in fondant, and then crumb coat the whole back of the cake and cover it that way. I think I was thinking that it'd be easier to crumb coat and cover it, which is true. I mean, I did have a good thought that way, but like the cake fear in me was screaming this entire time that the whole thing was gonna fall apart. Thankfully, it didn't. By the time I stood it back up, it was still standing. I'm just gonna cover it in my dark green fondant, which is supposed to look like the skin of the avocado. You know, the color that the avocados look like for like seven days before the one day they go bad and they're brown? That color. Now avocados aren't really perfectly fondant smooth, they have some texture to them. So I'm going to create a tin foil glove by basically just scrunkling up some tin foil and then using that to lightly press into the cake. Be careful while you press it that the cake doesn't fall over. Now I've made this big chocolate sphere and I have nowhere to put it, so I'm gonna have to carve out a hole in the center of this cake for that to go into. So I'm just gonna mark that with a circle cutter and remove the fondant and then use a spoon to carve out the cake. And you know, there's not really anything holding the top of it up, so I'm just going to work very quickly here. For the record, a standing up avocado cake was all of my husband's idea. This was not mine. Because we all need that non-cake decorator in our lives being like, why not? What could go wrong? So if this collapses, that's all on Mr. Icing. To glue that chocolate sphere into the cake, I'm just gonna brush some more melted chocolate into it because chocolate's just gonna kinda adhere to chocolate and then stick that in carefully. And to make a little quiet face, I thought he would look hilarious with a mustache because I mean, why not? I then cut out two little round eyes, put some white dots on them and made those little quiet cheeks glued the entire face onto my cake just using some water. He didn't look quite complete, so I thought I would give him some dancing feet and some jazz hands, which I just made out of fondant and kind of gave him these skinny little legs and these skinny little arms and stuck those into the cake. Why does he only have four fingers? Because he's an avocado, obviously. Thank you so much to Brookside for sponsoring this video, guys. Please give them a try. Let me know what you think and live a surprisingly delicious life. Don't be afraid to try surprisingly delicious things like avocado and chocolate. Mm-hmm, that was delicious. Leave a comment down below letting me know what weird flavor combinations you're into. I'm very curious and I'm gonna leave mine there too so you can check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And of course, don't forget to come back here again next week so we can make something else in the cake or desserts or whatever I'm feeling that week. Bye.